You know this deal as well as I do. You've been with me every step of the way on the cross negotiations. You've been to every meeting I've had with him. Yes, but Grandy, you did it all. No buts, Paula. No doubts. I trained you. Mr. Cross, I must point out yet again that it must be a full buyout, 100% or nothing. The deal blew up in my face, Grandy. Ah, oh, he'll come crawling back to you, of course. He's got nowhere else to go for the money. What will you do then, Paula? I shall tell him to go to hell. It wasn't Min with him, was it? No, it wasn't. It was Sally Hart. Didn't you know? They're having a thing. I could never live in a city, Jim. <laughs> it's Paula, isn't it? That's why you're going to the States. Has anyone else guessed? No, no. There will never be total peace in this family of mine. But I would like a bit of tranquility for the rest of my life. Lackey, my lifelong friend. What a life we have seen. You know, Emma, you're still that snippet of a Yorkshire lass that I've loved for 66 years. What have I done to upset Shane? You couldn't possibly upset Shane. You two have been inseparable since you were babies. I knew I'd find you here with your mistress. Please, ma'am. No wonder you didn't want me at your grandmother's party. I've done nothing to keep you away. You should have brought me here. You, Emma, who truly, truly is a woman of substance. To Emma. Emma. <laughs> In everybody's life, there comes a time when it is appropriate to step aside. The heart department store chain will now be run by my granddaughter, Paula. I charge you to hold my dream. You seem to think that Sex is the answer to all of our problems. We haven't got any problems. How can you say that? Well, tonight finally proves that you can't make it with me because you're in love with someone else. I was going to ask you to marry me. Oh, Blackie. I lost my nerve. Finally engaged. Let's just say we're engaged to be the closest of companions for the rest of our lives. I've always loved you, my darling. And I've always loved you. Goodbye, my dearest friend. The girl I married enjoyed life. But she's turned you into a cold, calculating carbon copy of herself. You've disappeared. Is that why you married me? For the money? The power? To get back what you think is rightfully yours? The hearts are uh, intimate friends of yours, of course, aren't they? Yes. An attractive girl, Paula. I haven't seen her in several years. What awful thing did I do to you to drive you out of my life? When did you discover how you felt about me? Uh-uh. The, the truth. Remember. Last night. Paula. You do want to marry me, don't you? Oh, yes, Shane. How serious is it, Doctor? There's a fracture of the lung spine with probable nerve damage. I won't be able to speak to Jim about the divorce. Not for some months. I know that. But I've, uh, I've waited all these years for you. What's a few months longer? At first, I thought her ladyship's death was an accident. But later, I began to wonder if it wasn't foul play. Certainly not. 
my wife would not have killed herself, whatever her state of mind. I'm convinced that her death was an accident. She told me several times that she'd nothing to live for and she wished she were dead. Jim, you're on painkillers. Do you really think you ought to be drinking? Don't fuss, darling. Anyway, I'm not on painkillers now, and I prefer this. You didn't tell him about Stonewall properties? Good heavens, no. That's our secret. Is it asking too much to give a second chance to a fairly? I never mix sentiment with business, Jim. He's only a fairly. He's not good enough for the heart. God, you're incredible. And you, Jim, are your own worst enemy. Please, don't fall into the trap of staying together for the sake of the children. She's a wonderfully wise old bird. She told me I'd come back to live in Yorkshire. I had the feeling she knew about us. I asked you to hold my dream. But you must also have a dream of your own. Just a minute. I'm going to contest this will. Please be so kind as to sit down, Jonathan. I was left the Park Avenue apartment in the will she drew up last year. Not just a couple of paintings. Jonathan's right. She Shane did come into the house. Shane isn't even family. Why is he? He doesn't need that. How she's got this best friend in the world. Shut up, all of you. Just shut up. She's only been dead for a few days and you're behaving like vultures. You have to catch him red-handed. Set a trap for him. Jim, I want a divorce. Well, I don't. And I'm never going to agree to one. Now, Jonathan. Anything new to report? No, the property market's very quiet at the moment. Even Stonewall? Stonewall. Stonewall is owned by you and Sebastian Cross. And Sarah has invested a great deal of money in it. What's wrong with investing money in Stonewall? Shut up, Sarah. Psst. You're fired. Oh, you can't fire me. I'm a shareholder in this company and I have a right. As managing director, I have extraordinary powers. I can do practically anything I want. And I'll get you for this, you bastard! Get out! And you too, you bitch! I'll get you for this, Paul Fairley! I'd like Henry Rossiter to draw up a letter of agreement between us, David. Once I've got that, I'll start divorce proceedings. Your father. No. No, not Daddy. Jim's plane crashed in the mountains above Nice earlier today. Jim was killed, too. You were about to divorce Jim. You can't let his death come between us. No! 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 You must learn to stop punishing yourself. That's what Shane said to me. He was right. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, Shane. 